Hello everybody, this is David coming at you with another video. Uh, this time I'm going to do a VGA clock and calendar. Last VGA video I did, I did a clock. I'm going to take that same clock and then I added a calendar circuit and also put that on the screen. So here's the diagram for the binary clock. It's um, So to do a calendar, I either needed to do a 24-hour clock or add the AM and PM. I decided to keep it a 12-hour clock and just add the AM and PM. So that's actually, I ran out of buttons because with the <laughs> the months, days, years, you'll see. But um, I have the buttons for hour and tick minutes. And then the switch is for the AM, PM register. Of course, there's a reset, 100 megahertz, drives the one hertz generator. Um, each of those one hertz signals is for each of these uh, counters here. But the seconds, when it gets to a certain value, minutes will change. When both of these get to a certain value, hours will change. Same as before. And then those values from these three counters come out to binary, uh, go through a binary to BCD converter, and then the, out comes the module, the split up BCD values for hours, tens, or hours minutes, and seconds. Now I created this signal here because the calendar doesn't really need to know hours, minutes, and seconds. Well, it does. But I created the signal in here called end of day. So when hours is 11, minutes 59, seconds 59, and it's PM, the very next second is going to switch to the next day. So this signal drives the calendar. <clears throat> and the calendar, um, the all the values set um, needs the one hertz signal. So that's why that's coming out. So here's the calendar circuit. I have a button for the month. Um, day, year, this, um, so I split the year up into century and year, so I don't have a huge, like, counter that needs to count up, you know, to 2,000, so I just split it into a couple different counters, so I have day, month, year, and century, and this is to, um, the last two digits of the year, and this is, of course, the first two digits of the year of the century. So here's the end of day signal that comes in from the binary clock and the one hertz that comes in. We still need the 100 megahertz for button debouncing, but each the one hertz signal goes into each of these, and then um, the end of day is also used in logic, which I'll show you in a second. But then day, month, and year, century are all counters, and they get converted to BCD before being shipped out. And so here's the whole thing put together. Here's the binary clock, the calendar. I've got two buttons for hours and, and minutes, a button for month, day, and year, the switch for the century. There's also the switch for the AM, PM I didn't include on this slide. Um, and then, of course, the reset. And then the 100 megahertz is also coming in. I ran out of room over here, so I just stuck it in here. But here's the binary clock and its BCD values go to pixel generation, which instantiates the uh, digit ROM inside of it. I did alter it a little bit for AM and PM values, and I'll show you that. Um, so the binary clock basically feeds that end of day signal to drive the day on the calendar. And then based on the day and month, the month changes, the year changes and such. The VGA section down here, pixel X and Y going into pixel generation, also video on, and then H-Sync and V-Sync for the VGA connector out here. And then from the pixel generation, based on the BCD values of the clock and calendar, um, we have the RGB value coming out. So let me take you to the code. Okay, here I am in Vivado. Got a basis three project, target language Verilog. You can see the module hierarchy over here, the constraints file. I got them all up here on the top and I'll go through them. So here's the VGA controller. It's the same one that I've done before, so I won't go through this. Here's the new binary clock. There, um, It's pretty much the same clock I used before with a couple of changes. So like I said, I got the AM and PM. Here's the uh, the switch for setting AM and PM, the switch or the button for hours, minutes, um, 100 megahertz reset is a switch now. Um, so we get the tick one hertz coming out, AM and PM, and then the end of the day, which I don't think, yeah, AM and PM needs to go out for uh, pixel gen. Um, so here's all the stuff I create for button debouncing. So for um, AM, PM, hours and minutes. I just take care of the debouncing in here. Here's where I generate the one hertz signal. All the counters for seconds, minutes, hours. The register for AM, PM. And now for um, a signal for switching between AM and PM. So when the hours is 11, minutes is 59, and seconds is 59 on the next um, one hertz signal, this, this will be high. So it'll 
tick the AM to switch between AM and PM. Seconds counter, um, there's a reset for each counter. It sends them to sets this one to zero. Otherwise, if it's 59, we'll set it back to zero. Otherwise, we'll increment it every one hertz. And then down here, there's the debounced button for setting the uh, minutes. Um, don't worry about these notes. I'll take these out of here. I was doing some debugging. Um, but then I to help me get this right but then when the seconds counter is 59 we'll check the minutes counter if it's 59 we'll set it back to zero otherwise we'll increment it same thing here for the hours I have the debounced uh, debounce hour button and then ticking hours depends on minutes being 59 and seconds being 59 then we'll check the hours counter if it's 12 we'll go back to one um, same thing for uh, for the reset we'll tick it to um, we'll set it to 12 and then um, otherwise we'll increment. So here's the AM PM register. So either the switch or that signal switch AM and PM will just cause the register to toggle. Um, a, I'm, AM is actually a zero and PM is actually a one in the pixel generation. I'll show you that. But here's all the um, binary to BCD conversion to break apart the seconds, minutes, and hours counter. Here's the one hertz signal. It's gonna be the register coming out. And then here's the end of day signal right here. When hours is 11, minutes is 59, seconds is 59, and the AM PM register is one, meaning it's PM. We'll set this high so on the next tick, the calendar knows to tick the day. And then here's the uh, AM PM signal coming from the AM PM reg. Okay, here's the calendar. So we got the 100 megahertz coming in, tick one hertz, all these commented ones I was using for debugging, so don't worry about those. Reset is a switch now. The end of day signal coming from the clock, and then all the buttons and the switch to increment month, day, year, and the century, and then the BCD values coming out. Here's all the registers and stuff for um, button debouncing. So I'm debouncing all uh, three buttons in the in the switch for the century. Here's the registers. Keep track of them. So with the century being a five bit, you can only go out to the 32nd century. And I doubt anybody watching this video will live that long. But <laughs> that it can go out farther. But that's as far as I, I went out with it. So I create an end of year signal. So the end of year happens when month is 12, day is 31. And also we have the end of the day. Um, end of century is um, year is equal to 99 and we have the uh, end of the year and then also account for leap years in here So if you take the year value and modulus it by four and when it's equal to zero, it's evenly divisible by four Therefore we have a leap year. I'm going to set that leap year signal to one which will help in, in um, Changing the day which I'll go into down here if we hit reset the day otherwise at every one Hertz tick um, in this case, we can set the day with the button or we'll check if the end of day is happening uh, from the clock. And then based on the case of the month, um, I go through and, and change um, the day. So uh, for January, it has 31 days. So on the next tick, we'll go back to day one. Otherwise, we'll increment through January. Uh, February has the leap year. So if not leap year and day equals 28, we'll go to one. If we have a leap year and day equals 29, then we'll go to one, otherwise we'll increment. And then each month just go to the max day value. Um, for March is 31, April 30, May 31, June, July, August, all the way down through uh, December. And so now we go into the month. So if it's reset, we'll set it to one, otherwise we'll, this is the debounced uh, button signal. For the month, we'll check it if it's 12, we'll go to one, otherwise we'll increment it. And then else if, all this stuff depending on the month and the day. So if the month is Jan January and then the day is 31 and we get to the end of the day, we want month to go to two. And so if month is two and we're at day 28 and we're at the end of the day and it's not a leap year, we'll go to month three. Um, and then this one is for the leap year at day 29 and then just change just hard coding the month to switch when the month value is the previous month and the end of that month will go to the next month here's the year counter i started off at 22 because we're in year 2022 um, here's the uh, you can tick the uh, year value with the button here or we'll check for the end of the year signal and if if year is 99 we'll go back to zero otherwise we'll increment and same type of deal with the century 
We can uh, use the switch to increment it at the one hertz tick, or we'll check for that end of century value. Um, and then if century is at 99, it won't ever get that high. I, I should probably change that. Either the, just change the width of the register so it could it could read up to 99. And then here's all the, the BCD values for the month, day, year, and century. And here's the top module. I just tie in the, uh, the clock and the calendar. Really just the, uh, the end of the day signal right here comes from the binary clock and goes into the calendar. We have all the BCD values and all the buttons for, for incrementing them and stuff. And then here's the, I need the one hertz generator coming out of here. Um, here's the uh, digit ROM that I just took the ASCII ROM, cut out all the characters I need for the clock, but then um, I decided in between the, the day, the month, and the year, I'm on a period, so I'm going to put a period, so I brought in that ASCII code, and then I actually just changed up this code for the A and the P. So AA is that AM PM signal, which when it's in AM, it'll be zero, and PM, it'll be one. So I'm just going to concatenate some values to create um, using that signal to select A or P, and then that M will always be the same at 4D. Here's the pixel generation circuit. We get the 100 megahertz clock coming in, video on, X and Y, and the BCD values, the AM and PM for setting the, uh, the digit ROM for for what we need for that and the RGB values coming out. And then here I just sectioned off. This is what I same thing I did for the clock. Um, I just sectioned it off into the tiles because I'm going to scale it to 32 by 64. Um, <clears throat> and then I just basically copied it and then changed the values. I'm basically just keeping the same X values for each uh, calendar digit because it's the same uh, bit width. And I just shifted it down in the Y direction, and they're all in the same Y, the same X corresponds to um, the clock up there. And here's all the on signals. I added the AM, the PM to the clock, and then all the calendar signals down here. And then I also had to add more character addresses for month, day, the AM and PM for character address, for row, for bit address. The digit word is the same, it's the data coming from the ROM, and then the digit bit, whether the ROM is a zero or one, or we'll write the color to. And then <clears throat> here's the um, same thing I did with the clock. This is the clock portion. I didn't touch, change any of this. I just copied this and then changed all this down here for the calendar. So I got the month tens, month ones. I'm scaling it, so I'm using 5.2 and 5.4, just like I did up here. And then I'm setting the, the character address value so for um, it's going to be the same as the clock for the calendar for the month, um, the day, the year, the century. Let me take you back up. Here's where I added to the clock the AM and PM. So um, selecting the address for the either the A or the P, it's just going to be the value of three and then three bits of zero and then either AM or PM, which will be zero or one. So that's... Um, the address 40 or 41 will be selected for A or P, and then M is just set to 4D. Okay, here's I'm instantiating the uh, digit ROM with the um, the ROM address, the digit word coming out. Here's all the uh, creating the sections for the on signals for hours tens, hours ones, colon minutes. Minutes 10, minutes 1, the colon, the seconds 10, seconds 1, the A P section, and then the M section for AM or PM. And then do the same thing. I just copied it all down and then changed all the values. I don't want the uh, the month digit that 0 to appear if the month is less than 10. So I got this logic here. Same thing for the hours. Um, then I'm using the period, um, day 10s, day 1s, another period and then the century value, and then the year value. And then this is the last part of the code here. Um, if we're not in the video on, I'll send it a blank. Otherwise, I'm going to have a, a gray background, and then just going through if, else, if, going through all of the uh, the digit on signals, and we're setting the, the character address, the row address, and the bit address to what we set the values of for each character address, row, and bit address for each digit. If the digit bit is on, I'm going to have the clock in red. Um, going down through here is where I added the AM and PM sections. And then down here is the calendar. I'm going to have the calendar 
digits in uh, the aqua color. And then here's the ROM interface. So whatever character address and row address gets set up here in this multiplexer, that's what we'll drive the ROM with. with. And then the digit bit, we're going to um, put in the bit address, but instead of counting from 0 to 7, we're going to count from 7 down to 0 to read from left to right through the ROM like it should be read through um, for the ROM data. And then here's the design top for the whole thing. It's just uh, wires connecting it, connecting all the modules together, the um, the stuff for buffering the RGB. Here's all the out inputs and outputs, all the increments, switches and buttons, the clock, reset. Here's the one hertz. I am going to actually take that one hertz signal and blink an LED on the basis three as well. So when you're, because when you want to set the values, it, it corresponds to that tick. Um, and then here's the interface for VGA connector. I got the VGA controller, the pixel gen circuit, and then the top for the clock and calendar, RGB buffering right here. Here's a constraints file. I'm bringing in the 1 hertz mega, uh, 100 megahertz. Switch 0 is going to be set AM and PM. Switch 3 is going to set the uh, century. And then all the way over to the left on switch 15 is going to be the reset. I'm using LED 1 for the blink, 1 hertz blink, and then all five buttons. I'm going to keep the uh, left and right for incrementing hours and minutes and then just go from the top down, button U is month, the center button is day, and then button D is now is uh, the year, and then all the VGA connector stuff. Okay, let me show you it working on the screen. Okay, here's the clock calendar working on the screen. Um, let me grab the basis three. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, let me try not getting in the way of the camera. So I'm going to reset it. Should start back. So there we are. So now I can set the time. The time now is 1023. So I can hold the hour buttons or button. And then as the seconds tick, it will set the hours. So 10. And I won't set it all the way, but holding the minutes there, I'm incrementing the minutes. I'm going to use the uh, switch to switch between AM and PM. Just turn it off and whenever you get it set to where you want. And I'll increment the, uh, the month with the month button. Increment the day with the day button. Increment the year. We're going to the future here. And then if you want to increment the centuries, then you just get switch. Hold the switch up. Like I said, this will go out to 32, but I'm going to change that so we can go to 99. But um, let's hit the switch for reset. But there you go, clock and calendar. Ooh, I don't know why it went to 16 to 16 there. Oh, that's weird. But um, I can I can increment it to get it up where you want. But it should go to 2022. I don't know why it's doing that. <laughs> but it it does it sometimes. But there's clock and calendar in Verilog um, on the basis three. Thanks for watching.